Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, MTG Moxman here. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. We are here to talk about wonderful things, toys. Uh, for those of you who are new to the channel, I generally focus on magic cards, but I seem to have built a little bit of a following of people who like to discuss toys, vintage toys, new toys, just toys. And as an avid toy guy, and it's all my parents' fault, um, today we're going to talk about some older toys. Um, now, I grew up uh, mainly in the 80s. Some people would say I've never grown up, uh, but I love toys. And you can tell by the stuff behind you, you see my backgrounds and, and things around here, that I have a lot of toys. Far more than I have room for. Um, but today's toy focus will be on a girl 1984. Uh, okay? And this was done by Tomy Toys, um, which are, of course, no longer in existence, uh, having been bought out along the line like every other toy company until basically there's like Hasbro and Mattel. Okay? Those are only two main toy manufacturers anymore. Uh, you still have some air hogs and stuff, but it's, it's not the same. So, uh, the toy we're going to talk about, done by Tomy, uh, was considered a budget toy at the time. Um, but me as a child, I didn't think of it that way at all. Um, they were called Starry Orcs. Okay, that's S T T. Oh, sorry, Starry Orcs. S T A R R I O R S. And the Starry Orcs have like a, have like like most toys back in the day, they have a story. They're trying to tell you something. And they even did a Marvel's miniseries comics on it. They used to come with the figures inside the packages. Little comic stories about that particular character, but about what was happening in the world of Star Wars. Now, uh, a lot of companies did this little short, you know, um, intro history to the toys. Because they wanted you to feel attached to them. To why they look the way they are. Why they are the way they are. And I'm going to tell you some of the misconceptions I had as a child versus an adult. So the toys... Um, came in, in two generations, first gen, second gen. Um, there are uh, about a dozen unproduced toys, as far as I know, that were never made because the toy line dropped off. Um, and you could find them at Kmart back in the day, Byway carried them. That's where I mainly would buy them from. And they were around, uh, I think they were around $3, give or take, back in the day. So I'll start with showing you them. Now, uh, okay. We'll show you the good guy here. We've got Hot Shot here. Now, the Story Wars came as little action figures. Whoa! He lost his leg already! Pardon me. Um, and the figures were, I'll be honest, they're, they're pretty detailed, guys. They had little rollers so you could move them along the ground. The legs and joints did bend, though. So you had fiction pieces, but... The coolest part was, is you could take them apart as a child. And you could intermix them with other characters or reconstruct them yourself. Even the head came off. Into different parts. I can put them up here. I can move his legs up to here. And make an entirely different character. Each one also had a mechanized part, a wind-up motor. Now, if you're lucky, your motor still works. Most of those have probably broken down by this point in their age. Um, it, it really doesn't affect the value of the toy it's, itself. It's cool if it works, but come on. He has his laser guns firing out. And every Star Wars had a moving piece. I'm sorry, I have other figures here you can't see that I can see that I'll pull up for you. Um, and they were really cool, guys. Because not only could you just play with them as figures, you could intermix and make your own which was kind of like a Lego theme back in the day, right? Except for it was still action figure size. Now, the head, if you look up close, I'm going to try to show you on camera here. It has a little action figure inside, or at least it looks like an action figure. And that was my misconception as a child, is I thought these were like 50-foot tall robots. And that was the little guy inside. And that's not the story. I know, right? Blown away. The actual story here is in the Star Wars, that is their brain and it's made the brain is in a, a mold of a person on purpose because the story Wars guard man man the backstory is there's like solar flares that hit the planet and mankind had to go into suspended animation the story Wars, which there are two types the protectors and destructors and the protectors here um 
were really, you know, they're the ones who guarded man, tended to their places and stuff. These guys, the destructors, were there to destroy any alien life that tried to come to the planet after man was in spin animation. But millions of years go by, the culture of the Star Wars takes its own lead, and man is forgotten. He's kind of like a myth. But this guy, Slaughter Steelgrave here, cool name, right? Slaughter Steelgrave. Um, he knows about man. He knows man exists. He still remembers. But he makes sure nobody else remembers. It's all myth, random. You know, stars have broken down. They've been repaired over and over and over again over the time. So they don't know. Uh, but he knows, and he's trying to wipe man out so they don't have to ever worry about it and never have to awaken him. Uh, and that's where the story takes you to, where these guys, the protectors, come into contact with bones in, in the comics. And they're now seeking out man, where, whereas the destructors are trying to stop them. It was very... So cool. See, his motor doesn't work. I mean, I guess if you took these apart, you probably could. But they were very cool. You know, some had like little gold heads. Some had the parts. But you could intermix them. And they came with those play sets you could buy. Um, so this is, you know, Slaughter Steelgrave. I'll be honest. I don't remember every name because I, I, don't, I don't have packages here. But they were the hero. In the, the he, Hot Shot is the leader of the good guys. Slaughter Steelgrave is the leader of the bad guys. And then each of them has guys working for them. Like this guy here, wow, arms again. Him is a second gen, okay? You notice he has no parts in his chest. His mechanized part is his shield. See, it doesn't really work anymore. You poor shield. Anyway, it's still working a little bit, but not really. Come on, there you go. You can do it, you can do it. They're, they're 30 years old. What are you going to do? Um, but this guy was just... I loved him because he looked like a knight to me. Right? But he wasn't my favorite. We're going to get to my favorite. I'm going to give you a story. It's very cool. Okay. Then, you have guys who had the mechanized things in their chest. That one still works pretty good. And drill, you stop it. There's a stop button or an on button. And again, all the parts came off. And if you took care of them, the limbs actually stayed really stiff. And if they didn't stay stiff, we often would put a piece of paper in there to help make it stiff. Just a little slide, a little cut of paper, put it in, and made them stay stiff. Another guy, I think this is Bone Slicer. A big saw. And these guys, their heads came forward. See, they still have the undermount if you want to relocate the head. Right? But... They had almost like a plug-in piece that makes the head stay in front. Very, very cool designs and very robust toys. Because they're solid plastic, just hollowed out plastic, guys, these toys hold up remarkably well compared to most toys of the day. Um, 1980s, uh, uh, 70s, late 70s, early 80s, Star Wars figures had a molded plastic joint. That joint, if it got bent or moved, it would rip over time. These didn't. These little bolt pieces are hard plastic. They didn't seem to break. I have no broken toys. I have some misplaced pieces, but not broken toys, which is awesome. Now, some of the air figures I came out with, um, I have some in box upstairs that I didn't bring down. Depending on how well we do, we'll, we'll, we'll revisit this, right? Oh, by the way, on the back, see? They do, almost like G.I. Joe, they do a little story. I'm just going to hold that for a second in case you guys decide you want to read it. Okay? And this guy... All right, this is Star Runner, and it's kind of based on Beyblades nowadays, guys. This had a ripcord, okay? So you put him this way, and he comes up like a bird, right? Like a bird of prey that would track down the guys. But you could flip him over, put his ripcord in. Am I on the wrong side? Oh, oh, oh. I am. Sorry, my bad. Ripcord goes here. And when you pull the cord... The ball goes, right? And he could just float along like crazy, man. Okay? Because you would drop him. The wheel drops down. Here. Right? But, oh, where's the piece? If you put him in this mode, he rips. See, his, there's a Star Your guy, his headpiece, the brain. And he rips across like a spaceship. Which was just ingenious at the time. Uh, this was just such a cool toy. I actually have some still in package. 
that I managed to get my hands on. But this is one that I like to, you know, bust out and still actually, and the ripcord works great because these aren't, unlike Beyblades, these are solid metal inside for the joints of these guys. So they hold up really well. And you can, here, I'll see if I can do that again. Hold on, hold on. Let's see if I can do it one more time. Mm -mm. Oh, 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 oh. How did I do it again? Hold on. So when you pull this sucker, right? Listen, you can see that that's that's actually metal. It's a giant metal wheel. It's not even it's not even like a plastic one. It's metal. Listen to it. See how smooth that is? And it went for a long time. This would easily easily clear like this 20 foot room. It would just right across, no problem. And as a kid, you know, you, you set your starters like bowling pins, and this guy would come racing along to catch them. It was a very ingenious toy, guys, but very simple design. Like this is stuff we liked as kids. We didn't have to have all the amazing, awesome technology like I'm communicating with you guys today. We had something called imagination. And it was pretty awesome. By the way, sticker, decal, little storybooks come in these things. But an amazing toy done by Tomy. Tomy was underrated for this stuff. Toy line, unfortunately, didn't take off. They even did a cartoon, by the way, a single pilot episode cartoon. You can see right there, Tomy Toys. Right? Very, very cool. Look at the packaging, man. See how it's like a desolate wasteland? Now, see this here? That is where man is sleeping, which is kind of cool. That's called the Battle Station. I mean, definitely not the, the coolest name. But the Battle Station, done by Tomy Toys, was ingenious again. Oh, pardon me one second, guys. I did not put away a little ripcord. I want to misplace that. Again, you notice it's in perfect shape. My dad taught me to be careful with my toys. All right, so here we have the battle station. Now, this has a laser gun head that you can open and close. It had front lasers here and here. There was a trap door that would open up to let the guy come out. His name was Stinger. Um, this piece here, if you push that, this head shoots out from a spring-loaded thing, right? Right? It just so I can't do it, but spring-loaded. I think I probably have to set that down and put that back in. And it's a, by the way, it's a big spring, so it loads into the front. Very well designed, very well made again by Tomy. I know you don't remake toys like this now, do they? Stickers are old; they are coming off from where they should be. Now, the back opened up to reveal the battle station. Hold on. Eh. And inside the battle station, there is like the medical bay to fix Starry Ores. And over here in the comics is where man is sleeping. So these battle stations protect man. They're like the last basins of, of, of power for man. And their only job is to defend man inside. Nobody gets to go in except protectors. And then these little things here come out. They go in the front. And you can mount these big by the way notice little people again inside but they're not people they're brains that operate the battle station very very cool um now stinger and stuff i didn't he's over in the box he's not here and yes i have the box for this too which is awesome but it was just an ingenious look this this spins around right so you could rotate it the medical bay here fits the little story Wars figures and this little escape hatch opened up which i mean guys i know this seems like simple stuff but as a kid this was like to die for. This was literally two years of entertainment built into like 1999. It was crazy. And it was so, so well done. Because these all, see, the piece again, remember it's like Lego. All of these laser guns are interchangeable. You can take these, I can take steel, and you can just mount a giant laser on his head. Extra firepower ready to go, boys. I mean, lock and load, right? It was so cool, man. Guys, we used to bust out these things all the time on my street. It was just amazing. So, that is the battle station. Now, I am saving the best for last. And it's not the battle station, it's not awesome, guys. It is, it is totally cool, but it is not my favorite. We're going to bust out the favorite. Here is my favorite. Generation 2, AFA rated... I don't know if there's any more of them even in this rating. This is an AFA 85, guys. And this here is Flash Fist. Okay. 
He is amazing. His little coil thing inside, his little laser gun, he'd wind it up and it would go in and out like a laser beam. He harnesses the power of the sun through solar power, right? And blasts it as a giant beam in his comic. He was totally amazing. But there's a story that goes with this. So one last good look at him. I'll show you the back. This is the second hardest figure to get. This is Bolar. These are Generation 2s that were very hard. Oh, there's the name of that guy, Ripsaw. The guy we just saw looks like a knight. Okay, so here we go. Byway. Great little department store. You can read about that on Wikipedia. You can look it up. I can go into that some other point. I, as a child, loved toys. And I was not getting a lot of those as a kid. I was always told to take care of them. And my dad said, if you listen, you do well. When we go to Byway, you can buy a toy. And I knew. I wanted Flash Fist. Nobody in my street had them. And we knew there was some at Byway. Because they had an ad in the paper. That's right, your local paper had ads back then. So I showed up at Byway, and I was all excited. And uh, my dad got, you know, was going to get a coffee first with those little styrofoam cups. It was my little local strip mall, like a mall back then, right? And, you know, that's how it was going to go. I had to wait till after the coffee to go get the toy. Because that's how parents are, right? They make you wait and suffer. So... Finally, my dad is having the coffee, and I'm kind of having a panic attack as a child. I'm like, oh, what happens if it's all gone? Right? Like, you're just like, ah! And, that, and that's how I felt. I felt like I was going to die if I didn't get to that toy right away. So, my dad's like, are you serious? You can't wait five more minutes? I'm like, no. I really need it now. And he goes, you know what, here. And he gave me five bucks old five dollar bill with like the queen on it and stuff it was very cool so i ran to the store it's only about 30 feet away but i ran and they had the turnstiles no metal detector stuff or this, this is a turnstile so you turn style in like the flash man i'm like i'm gone i walk in and of course you know you see the rows of the star doors they had the power ring guys little rings you could wear and stuff with a little guy on top it's very cool i have some stairs and I'm looking for Flash Fist. So I'm flicking the figures, right? You're like, you know, like when you're looking for your figures, you go to the toy stores, like. He wasn't there. Oh, he, he was supposed to be there. And I knew he was supposed to be there. And I'm having a panic attack. I feel like I'm going to die. I don't know who to talk to. My dad's not with me. I'm going, don't talk to strangers. I'm not going to ask a person for help. I don't like doing that now. So I'm like. <laughs> And guess what? I'm looking around. And there was a kid with flash fist. There was a little kid who had it. He was walking with it in the store. Now, I would like to say that I was the bigger man. <laughs> and I was. I walked over and shoved that kid to the ground. And I took that star ore. He hadn't paid for it. I took it. So I took the figure after pushing this child down in the aisle. He started to cry. I didn't care. Because I got flash fist. You see? I'm like, yeah. I was a kid, guys. What do you expect? Of course I pushed him down. You know, you don't know any better. You're, you're hyperventilating. You want a toy. Don't make me feel bad. It's too late. I did what I had to do and you would do it too. Especially at that age and in that time when things were a little bit different when we were kids. So I go to the register and I pay for the toy. There's no hassles. I pay for the toy. I walk out. You see that, Dad? It's Flash Fist. Oh, so you got my, you know, my dad's looking at me. He's got the copy. Like, oh, so you, you got the one you wanted? Yeah, man, it's, Dad, it's Flash Fist. Okay, it's Flash guy. Flash Fist. You can say it, Dad. Don't be an idiot. So, of course, I wasn't an idiot. I stopped while I was ahead. But my dad's looking at me. And he goes, why do you look so worried? Because unfortunately you're a kid and you're looking over your shoulder to see if that kid has told his mom and they're coming to get you. And I'm looking over. He goes, did you steal that? I said, no. No, I didn't steal it, Dad. I have a receipt. Because I never stole. Okay? You don't steal as a kid. You want something in my house, you earned it. So I show him the receipt. He's like, okay. Why do you keep looking over there? And I'm feeling horrible, right? I'm going, well... Dad, as I'm trying to explain to my dad, like this is what's going on, going, Dad, a little boy had it. What do you mean? 
Well, there was only one, I guess, and that little boy had it and he took it. But you have it. Yeah, I pushed him to the ground and I took it from him. You what? So my dad's looking at me and he has that look in his face like I'm dead. You know that look, guys. You've had that look. You're like, you're dead. So I'm going, oh, I have to explain to myself, to my, to my dad what has happened and how much it meant to me. You know what he made me do, guys? I had to go back into that store with the figure and the receipt. I had to find the kid who, by the way, was not crying anymore. He wasn't crying. He had some red face, but he wasn't crying. I had to apologize to him, apologize to his mother, and give him the toy. He didn't have to pay for it. I gave him my receipt and the toy. And I didn't get no flash fist. I didn't get anything that day. I left without that action figure. And I never got to own it. And I've told you guys before, things like this in my head stick out. They're learning tales that my dad was trying to teach me as a child about how important it is to be a considerate person, a nice person, be the person you want other people to see you as, as well as the way you want them to be themselves. So I treat people with respect and I expect to be treated with respect. I'm nice to people and I expect to be nice back to me. That's just the way I am. It's the way I'm built. Okay? So I didn't get the toy that day. And I didn't understand at the time. I went home crying and ranting, you know, the whole thing. I wish my dad would die, you know, because I really wanted that toy. And it was very disappointing, guys. It, it stuck with me for days. But as my dad looks back now and he says to me, I was trying to teach you a lesson. I'm trying to teach you. You don't knock people down. You don't take things from people. You could find there when you can get in their time. There, it's, you know, it's just a toy. So years later, and I mean literally years. 20 years plus, I got my flash fist. And it cost a lot of money. So I learned my lesson, Dad, okay? I learned my lesson. It cost me a lot of money. And I hope, you, hope you're proud, because I am, because I still got my flash fist. Sooner or later, I still got it, right? So I still have my flash fist. I never got to play with it. Don't count that out in the future. And, of course, I still remember Star Wars as a very, very fond memory of childhood, playing with these toys every day. And I know a lot of you will never have that opportunity. You won't have the chance to play with Star Wars because, you know, you can't buy them at a corner store. And the ones online are like probably 80, 90 bucks now per figure. Um, so, little action for you. Oh, my arm! Oh, my leg! And that's the way it went down, guys. Thanks a lot for tuning in. This is MTG Moxman. I hope you enjoyed my little video on Tomy Toys. Uh, please support my channel. It'd be awesome if you guys hit the subscribe button and let me know what you thought. Have a great day, everyone. Toys rock. They do. I just almost dropped the camera. See? Toys. There they are. They're just in a pile now. They've been, they've been beaten up by me. <laughs>